before I start, I just want to get this out of the way first. This is in no shape or form a review of Warcraft 3 Reforged. I'm only referring to the original game that came out in 2002, but I am using gameplay capture from the new one because it just looks prettier. Now, I love Warcraft 3 because of many reasons. However, none of which have anything to do with the online multiplayer mode. It's quite simple. I suck at it, so I do not play PvP when it comes to RTS games. But I do enjoy the hell out of the story from the campaign mode. So in this video, I will not be going into the gameplay mechanics and all because I don't even like RTS games that much. It's something I do enjoy playing, but more or less, I just tolerate this medium in which the developers have chosen to convey their story. And when I started to think what exactly I do love about the game, I came up with the characters together with the writing and some themes that are not commonly discussed nowadays in video games, mostly due to their complexity. But anyway, let's hit it! After you finish playing the prologue with the orcs, you take a brief glance at humanity and you meet Prince Arthas. And what a character he is. His storyline is so well forged, no pun intended, that his evolution is one of my favorite character arcs of all time. Right off the bat, we see him worried about Strandbrad, a defenseless village about to get attacked by the orcs. He talks about this with Uther, his mentor, but through the dialogue you can tell that Arthas's goal isn't bloodlust, he only wishes to defend this village. He's genuinely worried about his people. But what about the others who were taken away? Don't worry, son. We'll find them and bring them home safe. However, in a subsequent cutscene, he betrays a rush to anger and vengeance, a clever foreshadowing of his inevitable transformation. Damn, these orcs will never surrender. Then let's get in there and destroy the beasts. Remember, Arthas, we are paladins. Vengeance cannot be a part of what we must do. And this carries on and only intensifies from here on out, as we can see in this scene when his anger is getting the better of him. You can't hope to defeat a man who commands the dead all by yourself. Then feel free to tag along, Uther. I'm going. With or without you. Also, his voice actor does a fantastic job of conveying these states. Glad you could make it, Uther. Watch your tone with me, boy. You may be the prince, but I'm still your superior as a paladin. As if I could forget. What I love most about this character is that he starts out as such a hero, a being of pure destiny and a paragon of goodness and kindness, it just hurts how beautifully his storyline was crafted. Nothing moves me more than a hero's descent into the irredeemable abyss of darkness. Such is the regrettable destiny of Prince Arthas that in the end became the Lich King. Now, we are one. I have to say that, for much as I love the fall of the hero and the rise of the villain, when it comes to the theme of destiny or free will versus servitude to a higher power, I'm a sucker. Because it's almost never explored in video games anymore or not even done properly in movies. In my case, except Warcraft 3, there's only one other game, or better said, one other saga, that approaches this subject of fate, and that is the legacy of Cain. But does one ever truly have a choice? One can only match, move by move, the machinations of fate. Especially Defiance, where the narrative just comes together so masterfully. If we rewind the timeline a bit, we see Keltazad in his human form as being part of some grand plan to eradicate the living. A little bit later, Arthas finally strikes him down and Keltazad says this. Naive fool. My death will make little difference in the long run. For now, the scourging of this land begins. At the time, you pay no mind to it, being just another boring monologue of the evil guy, and you keep on playing until Arthas' destiny is severely altered. And as irony has it, if as a righteous paladin Arthas killed him, after he becomes a death knight, he raises Keltazad from the dead, thus fulfilling destiny's will once more. I am reborn as promised. The Lich King has granted me eternal life. 
But is it in fact destiny, or is it the will of another? Because in the meantime, you see a different plot taking place, and someone by the name of Archimon is apparently pulling all the strings. Believe me, brother. Neither the Lich King nor his undead lackeys will jeopardize the Legion's return. See that they do not. Lord Archimon has little patience for failure. Now, the game starts out with Thrall, the mighty orc chieftain. It's just that for me, the orcs don't really do squat. I can't side with the orcs, I never felt attracted to their storyline, I'm just neutral about them. However, I do like how they are portrayed as a people. Mighty, fierce with a warrior's coat, and they adhere to the noble death on the battlefield creed. Except that I have little love for them. I mean, Thrall is very well written, his character exudes strength, verticality, and I respect them as such, but that's about it. Oh, and there's Gromash Hellscream. He really doesn't do anything for me. At all. But his tie into the Demon's Master Plan was spectacular. I never expected elements like the trickery Manorath used with his tainted blood to grant orcs the power to do his bidding. Let alone the gripping end of the orc campaign that glued me to the monitor and made me actively take part in the story. Now, even though I didn't like this part right from the beginning, by the end I genuinely felt sad for the death of Hellscream. You freed us all. Next are the Elves. Now I was never a fan of Elves either, no matter what fantasy realm they came from. To me they're all snobs and conceited like... The Dwarf breathes so loud we could have shot him in the dark. But then you find out how brave and dependable they are, and when things get heated in battle I'm all like... Well this is a thing unheard of! An Elf will go underground, when a Dwarf dare not! Oh, oh, I'd never hear the end of it! By the end, after we've been there and back again with the elves, honestly, all I could think was... I thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. What about side by side with a friend? I... I could do that. But now to our point, I was awestruck by how amazing the elves fitted into the story of Warcraft 3. And out of all of them, I found one in particular extremely cool. In truth, it was I who was betrayed. In contrast, I don't like his brother Malfurion at all, and he's the so-called hero of this storyline. The horn has sounded, and I have come. That's what she said! <laughs> In any case, I love Illidan because he's the villain you actually root for. His storyline is an integral part of the whole Wheel of Destiny approach, crossing paths with Death Knight Arthas, and as we all know, Arthas was predestined to fall from glory and consequently to encounter Illidan. <laughs> Pre-war daemon is a bitch, isn't it? But the best part is, this is just the beginning. When you adventure further and play with the Blood Elves and the Naga, you see how their purpose unfolds, all coming full circle to Illidan again. The Naga are yours to command, Lord Illidan. The Blood Elves are yours as well, Master. So up until now, you were led to believe that the Lich King was pulling all the strings and he surely was the most powerful being out there. That's until you see this cutscene with Illidan pledging allegiance to the demon Kil'jaeden. I've come to offer you a second chance to serve us. What would you have me do, Great One? Well, it turns out that this guy created the Lich King. My creation, the Lich King, has betrayed me. He dared to break the pact that binds him to my will. 
What I'm trying to get at is that the script is so well written that when you think you know the entire story or the hierarchies, in comes a plot twist that turns your world upside down. And how can you not love such an amazing video game? These stories and their immense power to immerse are what made Warcraft 3's single-player campaign revered and worthy of remembering. You know, back when Blizzard was making games, not disappointing people with sequels or remasters or whatever. Sorry, but I just couldn't help myself. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Phone, phone. right? Anyway, cutscene by cutscene, dialogue by dialogue, everything about the writing of Warcraft 3 is superb. Almost every storyline has an open ending, but all of them continue in the amazing world of World of Warcraft, which I also love to death. If a game is the sum of all its parts, then as a whole, Blizzard's title is and forever will be a classic fantasy story worthy of comparison to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. For me, it's an epic saga that is just filled with nostalgia, and that's why I love Warcraft 3. And now that my task is done, I will take my place amongst the legends of the past.